Thank you for tuning in to As It Lays. Today's subject is Anthony Kiedis. Anthony, thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. As It Lays. Interesting choice. We'll just get started with the questions. Good idea. What's one thing that you believe would make the world a better place? <clears throat> just one thing. My honest answer? would be kindness. My sort of self-centered answer would be music. And my super centric answer would be air that you can breathe. Having just come from Cairo, where the simple taken for granted act of breath is not an option. Let's go with kindness. I feel like when you get to the metaphorical gates of Peter, really all they're going to ask you is, were you kind? And I, I don't know, maybe the whole point of this little tiny blink of an eye that we're here is just to decrease the suffering through kindness and other thoughtful acts. It could be painting, it could be caregiving, you know, it could be just smiling. That's all. Did you ever fake it until you made it? <laughs> I like the question. Um, I'm not against that principle, but I can't say that I did fake it until I made it. Doesn't quite rhyme as well, but yeah, no. I, I always felt it till I dealt it. What age would you pick if you had to stay that age forever? I like your questions. Um, so when I was 11, I was so enamored with life that I had a, a, a little um, steering wheel handlebars off of a bicycle that I had stuck down a pipe and I was 10 feet up in the air sitting on something else and I was just next to a uh, cherry tree and I didn't have this weird thing with God yet. I didn't have any sort of relationship. And, and I just looked at this guy and I was like, God, I am loving 11. Can I please just stay 11? This is all good. I don't want to move on from here. I like this. That was then. That was 1971, One, 1973. So now I would just... If I could twist time and age, I would want to see what we look like 500 years from now. So let's say 556. What's the spiciest thing you've ever eaten? What or who? Is that what? What? I don't tolerate spice that well. Genetically a little bit intolerant of the gnarly spice kingdom. Um, but there was uh, an experience with a Bolivian girl in Indonesia once that was pretty spicy. Is there anywhere you've been where you aren't allowed back? I did get 86th from the Rainbow Bar and Grill when I was 16, but eventually they had to lift the ban. Um, it's a true story. Uh, Canada wasn't that happy inviting me into their country for a while. You know, the, the most polite place on earth, and then they weren't asking me to come back, but <sighs> all things must pass. Recently, have you come to any profound revelations about yourself? Almost every day. Um, the, my, my most recent revelations is, even though I'm sober, I'm still a flaming addict of anything that presents itself, that goes down those subways of your brain. Um, 
but I, at the same time, so this, I've got this like powerful addiction personality inside my head, but also the ability to just say, well, that, that's what I am at this moment in time and I'm okay with that. Cut to Tom Hardy has a good point about being grateful to have snacks and be alone in your house. Who deserves more credit? I would say the mothers who sing like angels while they're doing the dishes after having fed the five kids in Oklahoma. What takes up too much of your time? The motherfucking internet. And all of its evil wizardry. Woo! Yeah. I, I don't like the whole government Silicon Valley. Let's... I mean, we're already sensitive creatures. And they just got us by the short hairs with this technology. It's, it's a little maddening. But, you know... It takes up too much of my time. That's my fault. What news headline would you most like to read? Oof. Well, my goodness. Um... I'm really thinking about this. Um, I guess I'll go with the aliens have landed. Is there something you love most about your home? What Tom Hardy said. Being alone in your house with your snacks is a greatly undervalued experience and we we me bitch and moan and complain and get all anxious and twisted and neurotic and sociopathic and hey i'm just home alone peacefully in my house with some snacks so i like the snacks but really of course you know my my roommate is my favorite thing about my house he's 11 and we share the same last name What's the most memorable thing for you about high school? My friends. So, I was supposed to go to University High in West LA. And I had been lying about my address the whole time I was at Ralph Waldo Emerson Junior High School. And I show up to high school with all of my team, my friends, my people, my little pothead squad, and they're like, eh, you can't go here. You don't live where you said you lived. And I was like, what? And they're like, yeah, you've been lying to us the whole time. I was like, yeah, but okay, what, how about now? And they're like, nope, you can't come. So against my will, I was forced into Fairfax High School. Seems like a calamity, but that's where I met the friends that I would actually live my life with forever the Fleas, the Hillels, the Jack Irons. So it was a cruel twist of fate that actually opened up my entire life to be what it is today. Long-winded, I know. Do you have any running group texts? I hate group texts. I'm a Scorpio. I like an individual discussion, a little bit of privacy, you start seeing all these names, uh, not for me. So no, I don't have a running group text. Every now and then, I succumb to a group text to get something done. Not for me. What's something that you like to do the old-fashioned way? Live. Do we make our own luck? 
I would say we make a bunch of our own luck, but I would say the Cosmos deliver a, a blast of luck as well. And maybe we made that luck in a, a previous lifetime, who knows. Spin that Wheel of Fortune to find out. Dinosaurs or dragons? I'm dinos. I'm a dad. I lived through the re-education of dinosaur technology with my boy. It was fun. It was tangible. It was magical. And oh, if you ever get a chance, watch a little animated dino documentary called Broken Jaw. Heartwarming. What would be the most difficult thing about having you as a roommate? The most? I think I'm, I think I'm accidentally bossy. That would be a real pain in the ass for anyone. Is there a quote that's always stuck with you? To thy own self be true. What's something that you wish you could erase from memory so that you could experience it for the first time all over again? The 1970s. What does friendship mean to you? Well, it's a little bit of a, a magical moment when you realize that you want to share a road with somebody. It's a pretty good feeling. And a way more um, regular occurrence younger in life. Like, I watch my son develop friendships, make new friends. He's a master at it. He hones in on the kid he wants to hang out with and they become friends, which I did as a kid myself. And now it's like, do I really want to be friends with that guy? I don't know if I can be friends. No, maybe the older you get, the harder it is to make new friends. Suddenly it's like you got a bunch of friends from forever ago. Did I get off? Did I get off the subject there? I don't know. Stay young at heart when making new friends. What do you want the world to know about Anthony Kiedis? Nothing. Less is more in this case. I wrote a book once and it was a big mistake. I forgot that people were going to read it or might read it. And then they read it. I was like, what was I thinking? Why did I do that? Um, you don't have to know anything about me. Well, that's all the time we have for today. Thank you so much for being here. Absolute pleasure. And thank you for watching. Thank you. Thank you.